everybody, Dan here of TrendSpider, and I wanted to make a quick video to show you how automated anchoring in TrendSpider can make your life easier. And this is going to be especially true if you happen to use VWAP or Anchored VWAP or volume uh, profiles or volume by price in your analysis. So, you know, everybody knows that in TrendSpider, if you right click on a candle, you can drop an Anchored VWAP on that spot. And Anchored VWAP is an indicator pioneered by Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends. I'm going to put a link in the description to his website because it's great. And it is one of the most interesting indicators that I've come across and one of the very few that I use myself. The other indicator I use myself a lot is volume profile, right, which allows you to measure the volume by price level from any point on the chart that you like. Both of these indicators have one thing in common. They're anchored, meaning they start collecting data at a specific point that you, the user, need to select and define. That's a lot of work, right? Because when you do this, you move, you have to move it around a bunch. You have to try to find the right place. It becomes somewhat subjective, right? Um, and there is a uh, potentially better and uh, easier way to do it by automatically anchoring both of these indicators at predetermined points in time. So I'm going to show you how to do that. The first thing, um, and I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do that, right? Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take my volume profile indicator. We're going to go into its options. Right, and I got there by clicking the three dots in the chart key, but you can also do this exact same thing in the indicator manager, right? It'll work in both places and I'll show you uh, both of them. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna leave my settings alone, but I'm gonna change this anchor to column from manual to something else. And you should know, Transmitter can do this a gazillion different ways and some of them have options, right? But I'm gonna select year to date, which is gonna place this volume profile that I'm modifying here exactly at the start of the year. And you'll see when I clicked apply there, it moved it right to the very first trading day of the year in the beginning of January. And now I have a volume profile that shows me what prices were most popular with traders starting at the beginning of the year. So this year, 2021 only. The next thing you can do with this is you can, you can start to get a little more sophisticated with your anchoring rules. So I can click on the same three dots and I can change this from year to date to something like, I don't know, recent gap. And when I select recent gap here, it's gonna ask me to define a, a gap, right? So what is a gap? Um, TrendSpider looks at the ATR to give you a way to control that. So I'm just gonna leave it on the default of 0.5. I'm gonna click apply there. And you'll see that it uh, moved it so that it is now at the most recent gap that is greater than point, uh, half a percent of the ATR. Right, um, and that's over here. And now the volume profile line has moved into that position as well. Right, so this is very powerful because you can actually control how the system anchors, right? If you select lowest low or highest high or highest volume, right? Instead of asking you for an ATR factor, the system will ask you for a window size, right? The default being 100. What that means is it will take 100 candles on the left, 100 candles on the right, and roll that over the chart and look at the highest point among the most recent group of 200, right? It's always double this. So when I select this, you'll see that it moved it back to this low back here because this is the lowest low that fits that criteria. I don't have time to go into every possible option there, but just know that you can do this on the highest high, the highest volume, year to date, month to date, quarter to date. There's a whole bunch of options for it, and you can have more than one on your chart at a time. So I'm gonna show you what that might look like now as well. So I'm gonna add another volume profile to the chart, and this time you'll notice I'm in the indicator manager, not, um, not the little quick edit thing. And I'm gonna make all the, set, all the settings the same. Right, so I'm just gonna disable all the stuff, just leave columns, but I'm gonna set this one to anchor to year to date, right? And remember the original one, the yellow one is anchored to the lowest candle. And now you can see that there are two different volume profiles on my chart, right? One of them automatically anchored to the most recent uh, uh, low, right? In a 100 candle range, and the other automatically anchored year to date. And you can see when I flip through charts, right? I don't have to do anything here. The system is automatically doing this for me, right? Um, so it's saving me a lot of time and effort, and it's giving me a lot of information that otherwise might be a little bit uh, of work for you to get in a split second. The minute I change charts, the minute the system will auto anchor everything that I've selected, right? So that's really cool. I love using that. Um, it saves me a lot of time. Let me show you another thing you can do here, right? 
And this one is exactly the same, but it pertains to the anchored view app indicator instead. You'll notice that I anchored this anchored view app here at the most recent high, right? And now if I want to put another one on this chart, I have to manually select and right click where I'm going to anchor my view apps. And a lot of people like to do it this way, right? Um, because anchored view app does involve a little bit of art, you know, to, to kind of go with the science that is the indicator itself. But, you know, you may not want to do that on every chart that you're looking at. So what you can do is you can also set view apps to anchor themselves as well, right? This one I'm going to set to the highest high, and we're going to call it a range of 50 candles, right? It should probably leave it the same. Yep, kept it in the exact same spot. This one I'm going to change, go to its properties, and it's going to pull up the indicator editor, and I'm going to change this one. Oops, wrong option. I'm going to change this one to anchor, I don't know, let's say year to date. Right, and we'll make this one a different color so you can see the difference. Right, and you can see how that one has now moved from this candle over here to the year to date thing. Now, every time I switch charts, any of the anchored view apps that I've auto anchored will switch to the next chart. Right, they are not tied to your chart unless you manually anchor them. When you manually anchor them, they'll stick on that particular chart. Right, and they won't appear in others. But when you auto anchor anything in TrendSpider, it's always going to be across the whole system. And now you can kind of see how it might come together, right? I might turn on my automated anchored uh, uh, volume by price, anchored to the lowest candle to give me a nice wide profile. I might leave my two anchored view apps to year to date and the highest high. And this will give me information that I then can just act on, right? I can just look at and understand. I don't have to spend a bunch of time putting things on my chart by hand. And of course, anchored view apps, both automatically anchored ones and manually anchored ones can be used in alerts. So this is actually really cool because this is an automatically anchored view app, right? And I can set this alert to go off when price touches it, right? Or breaks through it or whatever I might care about watching for, right? But because it's an automatically anchored indicator, this indicator may get re-anchored in the future, right? So if I set my trigger option to multiple times and give this a good window of time, and I don't need to go that wide, but give it a little bit of buffer zone and just set it up like this. If I create this alert, it's going to trigger every time that price breaks through it. And even if it gets re-anchored, right, up to five times, um, it will also continue to trigger in the future. So it's a way for you to continuously monitor um, a particular chart for uh, interactions with anchored indicators and to do so with a lot less work on your part. So I hope, uh, I hope that was helpful. Um, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you're enjoying TrendSpider. And uh, if you have any questions about the platform, you know, or need help or want someone to walk you through this, be sure to reach out to support group. We are here to help. Um, and thank you again. Take care.